Is it recording? Yes. Yeah. All right. So welcome to our first installment of the uh, of this Kilo Massages uh, webinar. So just to give you a little bit of a um, um, an overview of what we've been doing. So uh, because we can't, um, you know, the, the, that's, the, this uh, virus really affected all of us. Um, I, I'm sure that everybody has a story to tell about, you know, uh, how it, in fact, it um, um, impacted them. Um, we, um, we, uh, I feel besides we've been um, impacted quite heavily because we have to, we basically have to close all the locations until further notice, right? Um, but we, we do believe that um, there's still some good that we can do. Um, and this is the little good that we have. We're trying to to um, uh, to give it back. So, what we are going to what we started doing is so every week we're going to um, use the wealth of knowledge that we've been accumulating over the years in, in the uh, in the form of like all of our experts writing about um, uh, different topics. And today uh, we are. Um, uh, talking about specifically um, um, stay comfortable in, in a work from home situation. And so you'll, you'll see like at the beginning of the week, we'll send some links on a bunch of different um, blog posts that we did for, for you to kind of read and, 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 and put you um, in contact. And then every Thursday evening, we're going to do this exercise where um, we're going to invite anybody to join and, um, and have a conversation about this with us. And then, uh, um, as we, uh, uh, as you'll see at the end of the uh, the webinar, we also are starting a new set of educational videos, as well as in person, uh, as well as uh, remote uh, consultations that will be available to you guys. Right. Uh, and before uh, you know, diving into the subject, what gives us the authority to you know, <laughs> kind of talk about this is because we. Believe it or not, like we, we looked at what we've been doing in um in in the uh, in the past when it comes to um, the specifically for uh, analysis of the posture and stuff like this. We have a wealth of um, information there, right? So um, every as you know, every week we've been like really studying the subject of one subject in particular, and what we've been doing with uh, with um, you know posture in particular for. Uh, standing and and um, and also working uh, sitting down, it's actually pretty big. <laughs> so, um, Eddie, anything you want to add, Olivia or um, Martin? So, uh, what I was thinking about doing is just maybe structuring the the webinar as taking a look at what the main, um, I guess, postural deficiencies are first, the ones that you see. Um, most people doing and seeing um, and kind of explaining why they're having pain from these postural issues and then eventually getting into ways of how we can we can fix them yeah that sounds good yeah. um, sorry Olivia you were saying something oh no I just agree with Martin I think that sounds like a great way to approach so what do I do so can I give you an example of how I work and you tell me how good it is or bad and then you can riff up from there or yeah, we can we can start with that. All right. Okay. So, so this this I, I got two positions. So I so here's here's the bit of technology, right? This is this thing that we do. So I'm gonna put. All right. So I, I lost your audio, Paul. Yeah, we lost. You're it. on mute. You're on mute, Paul. Thing needs to restart apparently. So, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Yes. All right. So, and you should be able to hear me even when I move around, right? Uh, okay. So, I'm, I'm dealing with two computers, right? This is my work computer. It's my computer. So, one position that I like when I'm, uh, when I'm working, you tell me how bad it is. Can you see this? So, this is my couch, right? This, this is, how bad is this? <laughs> about as bad as it gets. <laughs> uh, all right, why? It sounds comfy to me. It sounds comfortable. Yeah. It's comfortable to me. I don't know. Just... So, what's bad about it? 
So, I mean, the legs are up, you're comfortable, right? But if you're looking, say you have your laptop on your, on your lap there, look at yep. your, your chin and neck position there. So in order for you to really see, especially if you're using a smaller laptop um, or tablet, you're requiring your chin to jut forward a little bit. So uh, with that, that's causing a lot of strain in, that, um, in the back of the neck on those occipital muscles. So when you think about it, you know, your, your head weighs, what, 10 pounds? So um, if, you're, if your head's not in line with the rest of your vertebrae, right, those small muscles in the back of the neck are working um, over time just to pretty much hold up your head. So that's when you see a lot of people who, even if they're in a sitting position like that, um, and their head's jutted forward looking at the screen, um, you're going to get the pain in the, the top of the shoulders and the back of the neck. Okay. okay. Uh, the problem is, you know, so that's one of them. And I think that's one of the, the obvious thing is like, I, I see it now when I'm doing this, right? But, um, you know, the, the problem when people are started working from home is that like, even if I, let's say I'm, I'm sitting down at, a, at, my, at my, here, like at my, um, you know what, on this table, that's going to be easier to show. Right? So even I'm sitting down at my table here, right? This is, and I have my, uh, and my laptop is, it is what it is. Like I don't have a, a, a work from home setup necessarily. So I'm going to be like this anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you suggest that? Cause like, the, is the back also important? Like, do I, do I need to really be like this all the time or? So a way to, a way to help that would just be to get an adjustable chair. So yeah. um, what you want to do is to be able to have your, your shoulders straight back in line. So think about it as you want your ears, shoulders, and hips all in one line from the side. Ideally. Okay. So if that requires raising your laptop up or raising your seat down, um, that's ideally what you want. But so if I, I, if, I think another thing to note there is also the difference between your keypad and your screen. So if you're on a smaller laptop, usually yeah. your, your head has to look down at the screen or you have to shrug your shoulders, and reach the keypad. So if you're looking at a permanent work from home situation, Really, the best thing is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you put you put it like this, and you okay. Yeah. So Fair what enough. you do? So that way, you that it's just a way that you can um, better ergonomically set up your workstation. So you can either elevate your laptop and have you can elevate the screen, the monitor, so that you're looking straight ahead, and then okay. you have the um, keypad and mouse at a position that works um, with. You know yeah right. but what's what's the actual impact of this like what's the what's the uh is uh, the, the, the i'm trying to do a risk uh versus benefit analysis right like i'm i i need to uh and i ideally yes i would have a work from home setup but <laughs> i some some uh, sometimes like it's, it's kind of like you have your kids running around like you just go on that that's by and you kind of run where you are so what's the uh the consequence that you can that this type of position would have so if you are i mean actually what you're doing is kind of the best way to work from home to be moving around to be walking around to be changing position really you don't want to be any in any position for too long um mm. but if you are you know if you do have periods where you need to be on your computer for a while um yeah as martin said what's going to happen is it's going to put strain on the extensors of the neck um, so it's like over stretching the, the muscles behind and what it, what it, the other thing it's doing is it's shortening the, um, the front of the neck here. So your, your anterior muscles, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, will cause, yeah, cause, causes tightness and, um, eventually over time will shorten those muscles. <laughs> As so, I'm, re I'm reading the chat and Omar is saying it turns into a... Uh, you said he turned into a hunchback, essentially, working on his laptop. Anyway. Yeah, because yeah. you do this. <laughs> so, so over time, people will get so used to being in those positions that they might not even realize it until they go to do something like uh, mobility exercise or shoulder um, mobility work where it's like, oh, my God, my range of motion is just not there. So, um, like, we see that a lot, too, with people who are you know, getting a massage. It's like, 
oh, wow, I didn't even know my upper shoulders were, were that tight is because um, your muscles will adapt. Um, they'll, they'll adapt to whatever position you put them in. And over time, it's just like anything else, you'll develop um, just this kind of way that your muscles are going to be chronically tight or, you know, think of it. Um, so like a lot of times what I like to, to tell my, my clients too, it's think of it as a muscle being short and tight against long and taut. So um, the easiest way to like really think about this is the upper shoulders. Um, so if you're sitting at the desk, right, in that position and you're hunched forward like that, mm -hmm. so you're having, you're having the pain in the upper shoulders and the back. However, those muscles aren't shortening. They're actually lengthening. So okay. pain, pain, pain can arise in a muscle in a number of different ways. So it doesn't necessarily have to be short. Like um, the muscles that would be short in that example would be, you know, your, your pectoral muscles in the front of the chest muscles. Um, and then your, your upper traps, whereas, you know, the muscles in the front of the neck, um, those are the ones that are kind of just hanging out. They're length and, and they're just not working. So that's what you try to tell people too. And like, you know, the outtakes and tell, giving them homework and stuff like that is you want to make sure that chin is back. So, you know, you, you look weird doing it, but getting that chin back in alignment with the rest of your cervical spine and keeping everything in alignment. That's what's, you know, the first start to all this to get everything, you know, moving right. All right. So, can, so I guess. Can I ask so a question, yeah. sorry. What yeah. about crossing your legs when you sit? Um, so it's ideally what you want to do is have both feet flat on the floor at all time. Um, so when you cross your legs, that's when you start to worry about anterior and posterior tilting of your hips. So a number of different, um, you know, instances and injuries and stuff like that could happen over time. But like Olivia said before, as long as you're switching out, switching back, there's really no, no, you know, nothing wrong with doing that. It's just that sometimes when you're leaning to one side, you're compressing one side of the hip over time. Because um, okay. I but know you, a lot of people. You might be developing one side of um, the back muscles, you know, they might be strengthening, the others might be overextending, just as Martin was saying, can happen in the, in the back as well. Okay, so I just need to switch back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, the, who crosses their legs when they're working in front of a laptop? That's what I want to know. That's <laughs> it's for a friend. It's for that's a friend. Exactly <laughs> how, that's how I'm sitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, I think one thing that we can look at as far as like we all know that we're doing these things and the greatest part about it is that we're conscious of it now. Right. That, that we're rolled right. over. One idea may be like trying to keep the screen at eye level mm -hmm. will stop you from being, um, from being looking downward. But the other thing is that a lot of people aren't going to change the way that they work immediately. They're already addicted to that. So yeah. maybe some of the things to do, what I always recommend is to try to combat that by counter everything. Like maybe if you're sitting there, then take a break and put your arms, take yourself out of that flex position and almost open yourself up and be, and be conscious of it. And also retraction to build the muscles that are being overstretched and counter back what the muscles such as the chest and the upper traps are hypertonic. So the best way to do is try to relax them and take them out of that would be a good way to counter that while they're trying to change the behavior of the way they work. So you bring up a bunch of good points. So I think, so, uh, and again, like I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around all this stuff. So first um, I hear yeah, you're right. There's, there's a consciousness of the, of the position that, that just being aware of it uh, makes you realize that you need to do something different, right? And the second piece, which is like the... Um, so I wanted to, uh, to look at this routine as well, because uh, you, you mentioned uh, like doing this type of stretching. So I'm looking at this and something that would be useful um, as a routine to stretch at a desk. So I'm going to try to do it. So how do you do it? 
So can somebody demonstrate this? So it's going to be me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So here's what you do. And this is for posterity, right? So you tell me if I'm doing it wrong or right. Can you see? Can you guys see me? Right? So, and God knows, you know, you know how, I love, how much I love stretching. So what? You're going down like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then what? Uh, and like this. Yep. You, you head on the, uh, towards the ceiling. Like this. So basically you're taking your, your spine into flexion, extension, and then lateral flexion. Okay, so flexion. Extension, mm -hmm. and then the draw, this, mm -hmm. and then what? And then uh, the rotation. Okay, you, so what do I do exactly? Because I see the image, but I don't know exactly what I do. So am I looking this direction? Yep, that's exactly it. Uh, how much do I push? Like, do I push here, or yeah. do I? Yeah, so if you just rotate your spine, you're going to get a rotation. But if you pull on your leg, that'll just give you a little bit more traction to increase okay. your range of motion. So one side, so the other side. But do I need to go like try to look behind me or look to the side? Uh, just look as, as far around as your body will take you. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. So really like, like we're focusing on twisting the spine, right? Yes. And then what just do I do with, with, the, uh, with this? With this? Like yes. this? So this routine is basically taking your spine through um, different ranges of motion. And then now we're taking the cervical spine specifically um, through yes. range of motion. So again, so we have flexion, we have, yeah. uh, we have rotation and then we have lateral flexion. And then here, number eight is extension. So extend, so, and, and I look up. Yep. Okay. And, and then the last one is doing this. <laughs> like my kid is gonna like put my head on the on the, on the desk. But yeah. Um, and so what do I do here? Like is it is it still the back? I'm focusing on the back. So with that one, with that one in particular. So what you want to do? It's I know it's hard to see from uh, the image. So interlace your your hands behind your back, right? So yeah. Go ahead and interlace your hands behind your back and really try to pinch your, your shoulder blades together. So pretend okay. like you're, pretend you're trying to hold something in between your two shoulder blades, right? Gotcha. And, then, and then from there, you're reaching down. So open up your chest a little bit. You're reaching down and then fold forward, right? Bringing your, your arms up overhead too. So that's going to open up. Keep your head heavy, right? So you're just letting your arms fall back trying to, to bend at the waist so let your your whole upper body just fall forward and that's going to open see. up open up the shoulders a little bit i mean you can let that let the head hang heavy and just you know from that position just then doing a couple neck rolls doing some neck rolls in that position too really uh opens things up too and how much so how uh, long should we should i do this like i you know how often how I mean, really, I mean, as often as you can. Again, you can't you can't move too much. So, I mean, I know people who will set alarms at their desk, and you know, when the alarm goes off, they go through a routine similar to that. And that's okay. that's a great idea. And do you have a like a like rule of thumb or something on the? I usually say about thirty minutes. Every thirty minutes, get up, move every, around. Dude, guys, time. I'm not doing this every thirty minutes. There's no way. And then, you know, I get meetings that run one or two hours. There's no way I'm doing this every 30 minutes. All right. What about every hour? I, get, every I, mean, hour, yeah. I guess every everyone's, everyone's um, schedule is a little different, but I would just say as often as you possibly can. Yeah. You, can, you can't move too much. Again, um, as Martin was saying earlier, you don't want the poor position to become the new normal. So anything you can do to um, you know, take your right. out of the the poor positioning is um, is going to be helpful. And, and Kevin, you're hearing that that? Um, that that just any motion is beneficial, you know, above and beyond the stretching as well. So, like, you know, I've never seen Paul sit still. Therefore, that's kind of doing the, the same well, effect. I mean, that was what I said before. I said, what you're doing is absolutely perfect. You know, moving to the kitchen counter, walking around a bit, saying hi to the kids. <laughs> 
Uh, Kevin, you wanted to say something? Sorry. Well, I was just <clears throat> adding in that uh, I've noticed individuals, when you teach them the stretch, they tend to force them instead of slowly going in, into the stretch and just allowing the stretch to uh, the muscles to relax while they stretch. So you just want to force it and move on to the next thing. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, so that makes sense to me. Uh, so I'm going to move once every four hours. <laughs> it's not, not going to happen before than that. But, you know, uh, I get it. So moving around for, from position to position is good. Um, the stretch, I get a stretch routine. That's pretty good. Um, now I have two more questions. So one, uh, like, is there, like, no, knowing that I'm not going to be able to do this every 30 seconds, every 30 minutes, like, to be honest. Um, and I, I know that Omar and Nicola can say the same thing. Like, there's no way I'm, I'm doing this every, uh, every 30 minutes. Um, is there, like, should, is there strengthening exercise that I should do to make sure that, you know, I keep a position fairly straight? Yeah, so um, so how I explained it before with what's going on with your over overactivating the, the chest muscles, so your pecs, what's going on is those those mid thoracic muscles, so your rhomboids, they're the ones that are, are weaker. Um, okay. so so to counter, you know, this motion, you want to do, do things that you right. So you wanna counter that by doing things that are gonna bring your shoulder blades together. So any type of rowing motion. Um, you can do that with uh, resistance bands uh, or even um, try and think um, like even like stuff that, uh, so the thing with with chin, just say chin ups or push ups push ups push ups um, not necessarily because they're going to focus more um, anterior so you want to do things more that are going to do the opposite so rowing right okay um Okay, so we really focus on the upper back though. Like, is there, like, are we uh, anticipating any, like when you hunch, I have a feeling that also the, the lower back is going to be a problematic, no? Yeah, or or yeah. maybe I'm mistaken. Or... Totally, and also if you're sitting for a long time, the hips can tighten up as well. Okay. Um, uh, just so... going back to what Martin was saying before, basically you, if, when you're doing any kind of strengthening, you want to counteract the activities that you're doing all day. So okay. basically, you know, you're in the, I don't know if you can see me, but if you're in kind of like this position for hours, yeah. you want to do anything that will open things up. So um, like Martin said, rowing, any kind of swimming, um, you want to um, basically work on strengthening the muscles that have become overextended and lengthening the muscles that have become shortened. Hmm. So that's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because I, you know, I mean, I honestly don't do that. Like all I do is this, and then I go for a run like this, right. and that's it. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, no, that's good information. All right. No, that's that's the thing. Like so many people are so, um, like anteriorly focused. So you know, they they commute to work where they're sitting, then they'll go to to their office and they're sitting. They commute back home and they're sitting, and they're at home and they're sitting. So everyone, there's a lot of people that are very hip flexor quad dominant um so that's why like when you go and take these clients through like you know muscle testing their hip flexors and their quads are you know they're jacked they're they're strong but their glutes are just you know they're just hanging out they're not doing anything and okay. that's um that imbalance is what causes a lot of a lot of injuries to happen especially for the um, you know runners and, and cyclists who you know are they're very um hip flexor dominant activities so you really got to counter that all right. So countering the, this interesting countering the um, uh, the position, the, you know, the regular position. That's interesting. I never thought of it this way. Uh, so I, so you said rolling, swimming, and what else can I do? Like, yeah. So any like, kind of any kind of back strengthening exercises. Um, so what? So Superman. A, a, good one, a good one is that because like they're called prone Superman. So if you go down onto yes. your stomach, and there's different variations. So. You know, there's a Y, L, yep, yeah. Yep. yeah. And you can take your arms out to the side, take your arms out to a T, and just you're focusing all, pretty much the entire upper back. You're strengthening that. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, 
All right, so I had another question. The other question that you, the other thing that we were talking about is the, uh, the standing posture, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This morning. What, uh, um, so what's the, what do I need to do? Like, what's, what's the idea? So, ah, uh, yeah, and that reminds me of the, the, the question about like, you know, at some point there was this, this craze about like standing desks. I know I fell for it. Like I fell for pretty much everything. But uh, what's the uh, what's this what's the science? What's this? What do we, is it better? Like what do we know? So the thing with standing desks, I mean, um, just like we're sitting for too long of time, standing desks also could, could be an issue. Um, ideally, if you have the the opportunity to switch back and forth between the two, that's your your best option. Um, but just think about all the things that happen when you stand for too long. Um, so if you're, uh, when you stand for too long, a lot of things like, you know, the, the Venus return, everything's pulling out, out of your feet. So people like, you know, chefs and people who are on their feet all day, they're, um, sometimes in worse conditions than people who sit all day. Oh, um, interesting. And if you're using a, a stand up desk too, a lot of times people tend to, um, shift their weight to one side. So their, their balance is off their imbalanced on on one side and what that actually causes to happen is um the the hip joint is is moving is so jammed up that it causes a lot of the pressure to go into that groin muscle and with that that's the low back pain that you might experience from standing for too long mm. um gotcha. so everything everything uh, like what i tell people if you're standing i mean that's fine that's great it's just you want to be conscious of uh, you know what side like the, the weight is evenly distributed between both the left and the right and you're not yeah, so, that, you know. so that's that goes back to like this article that we were talking about which is so again i i think like i'm hearing a theme here which is like you need to make sure that you're balanced right mm -hmm. so you need to make sure that there's no like uh, side to side imbalance but i see also um so what soft knees tomac pulled in left listed Chin lifted, shoulder back and down. So what am I doing this? Mm -hmm. So easy. so so for that from that from right where you're at there. Yeah, perfect. So okay. um, a good way to kind of tell and gauge is remember when I said before. So your ears, shoulder, and hips all in one line. So okay. if you yep. So if you go ahead and kind of just bring your your head forward a little bit. Maybe yep. So see see where all that on your chest, all that is going to get bunched up. Um, all right. All right. And then, for example, if your shoulders move back, yep, that's going to put a lot of stress in the low back. They call that sway back. Right. Um, so that puts a lot of compression on the low back as well. Gotcha. OK. So, but it's, so what, do you, what is the biggest, like usually on, in the um, in the standing position, like what, what do you see the most? Uh, you mentioned imbalance on one side or the other. Is there other symptoms that you see people having that could cause um, problems? Um, so I don't see much of a, a problem just from you know body reading them. It's all about when they go to perform whatever activity that they were doing is when you start to see um, their issues come up. So when you're standing, and you, you know, you're shifting weight or whatever, that's an indication that you're not using your stability core muscles correctly. Um, okay. So that can cause a lot of issues as well, performance wise. Um, and it's, it's really important to, to keep everything stable when you're standing. I mean, you don't want to be, you know, engaging your, your, your core. You don't want to, you know, you just want to be able to keep everything upright. Cause when you go ahead and, do whatever it is that you're doing as far as workout related, you're going to see that as far as, um, you know, not engaging power strength and that kind of stuff. Interesting. So, and so I'm assuming that for this, for specifically for the standing position, like the, the exercise that we want to do around this are probably going to be, uh, again, core, like what planks and stuff like this, right? Yeah. So, I mean, when you say core, you don't, just don't think of it as like, you know, six pack muscles. Think of that as the entire corset, right? So it's your, your abdominals, your transverse abdominals, your obliques, 
even going into the low back area. So like when you said before, um, the, the Supermans, for example, that's actually activating a lot of your low back muscles as well. Um, so sometimes that gets misconstrued of people. So, oh, I have to strengthen my core, strengthen my core. It's not so much about sit-ups, it's about, you know, keeping everything from back, side to side, stable. Because that's going to help everything from the waist up and from the waist down, um, just kind of move more freely. Um, ah, so we lost Jack. Yeah, Jack's so dropped off and is having trouble reconnecting. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, well, can you, do you want to try to give him the URL again, maybe? Yeah, he said it's just not working. He just, it's just like shutting him out. Um, so a way to get him back in or? Uh, I, I can look it, I can look this up. So what's, do you have an email for him or? Uh, yeah, it's just Jack at Phil Massages. Okay. Uh, email, uh, how do I do this? I don't know, it's weird. This Jack. Is. All right, well, I just, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. This is the same page, receive an invitation. Manage participants? No, I don't know. You didn't get kicked out. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> don't I don't know. It's, like, it's like, if you didn't want me, you could have just said. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he text you that? Yeah. No. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, so this, this I, I'm going to send him to something. Uh, like, uh, yep. Uh, link to Zoom. Okay. Uh, all right. Cool. So I think yes, that's good. That, that's a lot of things to cover. And by the way, guys, thanks for for Gary and Omar and all of the guys to, to join. Like, we we trying to figure this format out. So appreciate the um uh the the uh oh, the sport yeah um it's, it looks like you know we're not going to be able to we're not going to cover two hours i think one hour is probably a better format when i wanted to uh, to do that kind of stuff anyway um does uh anybody has question about like posture or anything like this that you want to ask the guys that i didn't think of asking because i think we covered like the three things that we wanted to cover one question about the format here. Um, if you guys do this again, do it around like six o'clock and um, and give me like a couple days and get more people into it. Okay. Yeah, we're just starting it. So, okay, that's good yeah. feedback. So probably 6 p.m. The other, so that let us move to the to the other piece of the, um, um, uh, of what we, we, we are trying to do. So um, we, we're going to introduce two new things to, uh, to um, our members, so if I, I did, we put him on the mm -hmm. uh, on on this thing yet. So all right, so like I said, we're gonna keep giving you a blog post every every each beginning of the the week with a new theme every time. Uh, so we're gonna do those interactive days or so those webinars. Probably gonna reduce it to to an hour on on Thursdays, right? And we're gonna have a new theme every every week. And then we're also doing the two new things. So we're doing video series uh, where we actually building a course uh, a class around the around specific uh, topics um, related to health or for our team, like which is our core. Um, the core of our business and of course like for, for now like with covid running around uh, this is going to be going to be free and uh and then we're going to do one-on-one -on -one consultations as well uh if you if you remember uh during the shutdown like this is going to be um it's going to be free as well but uh if you uh as we move along then you're going to be able to um you know, purchase this. And this is going to be kind of added to the portfolio of our services that we have like kind of forever, right? And the, uh, uh, we haven't unveiled the, the platform yet. So if you're, if you're interested and if, uh, if you want to share that around, uh, just uh, subscribe to this. And uh, the one-on-one the -on -one consultation, uh, we're going to activate them tomorrow. 
right, Olivia? Yep. Right. So they're going to be able. They're going to be available tomorrow. So you can go like and talk to one of our um, one of our therapists uh, if you want to. You know, again, we give you tools and tips to like, stretch and and the thing that we do in our uh, in our office is going to be able to do this from from remote. Uh, and then the video series we are aiming, I think, end of March to have the platform launching. Hey, hey, I'm back. back. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we kind of, I, I see Nick going as well. Um, so I, let me recap what I was just saying. So uh, we, we've kind of like uh, finished the, the, the topic that we had today uh, and we recorded it. We're going to share it. Um, and we, this is the new thing that we that we are um, offering now. Um, so we uh, are offering. So every beginning of the week, we will uh, choose a theme and start uh, giving you uh, uh, assets around this theme. Uh, on the uh, on Thursday, now we're probably going to do uh, sixty minutes, uh, uh, 60, uh, 45, 60 minutes. Uh, at 6 p.m. where we're going to just have this kind of, uh, you know, hangouts. And then we're doing a video series, uh, and this is going to be a library that's going to be built upon. Um, and little by little, we are going to drop our first uh, series, probably we're aiming, like I said, like end of March. And one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations are available for you um, uh, starting tomorrow. So uh, at, uh, at the moment when we're trying this this out, it's all uh, it's all free. Uh, give us feedback. We're trying, right? We're trying to find a way to uh, uh, to reach out to our community. So uh, if you think if you have an idea, if you want to participate, just let us know. Right? Uh, it's any uh, anybody has questions? You want to comment? Anything that any suggestions? Let me know how I can help. Yeah, well, you know, we're gonna like. I think bringing troops. I think what the message, the what uh, we we have something to say. I mean, they, I learned something today from Martin and, and Olivia. So I think this be good to uh, if we can spread the word. I have a Nicola? question. Yeah. Yes. So when you drink while you work, how do you supposed to hold a beer? Yes. <laughs> 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 You gotta get one yes. of those helmets. Oh, there you go. You the helmets that have the strap. Yeah, that's hat. true. <laughs> okay. Can you, can you, is it better to have like the uh, the feeder or whatever? Yeah, do you have to be like, like this, like this, or like this? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. All right. For, All right. I think we are, so this is what I for installment. I think we said 45 minutes to an hour seems perfect. We're going to do it later uh, and uh, we'll bring beers. I think that we get a plan for next time. Thank you. All, All right. right. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Thanks. I'll edit this and share this. And thanks Thank for you. coming. And I will talk to everybody later. Thank you.